I'm not entirely convinced that's a great way of doing things, to be honest. I'm looking at reorganizing some tables to fix up some fragmentation. What is a reasonable estimate of how much space I'll need to perform the operation? There's two things we should talk about here. One is let's talk fragmentation. The first thing is, I've said this in previous office hours things, if you have an object in lots of extents and that's why you're reorganizing it, forget about it, it's not an issue. If you have a lot of empty space in your table, but you're still gonna keep adding rows to that table in future, don't worry about it. That's free space to be reused, a waste of time reorganizing. If that table has reached some sort of steady state and you want to reclaim some space, or you want to, for example, compress it, or you want to recluster it so the data is differently sorted, then yes, then they are justifiable reasons for reorging tables. But just to restress again, the concept of defragmenting uh, a database is not a hard disk drive. So be aware that fragment, you know, reorging is something that's generally pretty rare. Having answers, having said that, when it comes to how much space you need, the answer is it depends. And this was a discovery I made when I ran out of space recently trying to do a similar operation for a demo. And you'll see some subtle differences now with some of the facilities we have available when it comes to reorg. Let's have a go. A nice easy way of seeing how much space we'll need throughout the entire process of a reorg is I'll create a table space here. It's called demo. It's tiny. It's 10 megabytes. And it's only going to grow by one megabyte at a time. I'm going to do all my operations in here because then the high watermark of that table space will show me the temporary high watermark of demand I needed, even though the final result might be smaller. So I'm going to create a table that's 25 copies of DBA objects, a million rows or so. Uh, it should be a few hundred megabytes, I think. Yeah, so if I see how big it is, I've done bytes divided by a megabyte. So this table is 336 megabytes and it's the only thing in that brand new table space. And as you'd expect, the table space has grown to a little bit more than that. Now I move that table. Now a move has to take the existing data and rewrite it somewhere else. And it's done. So we can see the table space grew to about double the size. 330 plus 330 gives about 670-ish. So temporarily, we can see we obviously need twice the space because the data is effectively copied to a new location and then the old one is freed up again. So we can see our segment is still 336 megabytes in size. It actually moved from probably the start of the table space to here, and then this space got freed up again for other segments to now use. So a standard move is gonna take you double the space. Let's drop the table space, recreate it nice and small recreate our same table, same size, about 330 megabytes or so. It's 336 megabytes. My table space is the same size. This time I'll move it and compress it. So now I'm reading the data, 330 megabytes. The question is, do we copy it all and then compress it? Or do we copy the compressed version? The table space only grew to 455 megabytes, which is promising. If I look at how big the compressed data is, it's 100 meg. So it went from 330 meg, we read it, we compressed it on the fly, resulting in 100 megabyte compressed. Therefore, the temporary high watermark was about 450 megabytes. The original 330 plus the extra 105 to actually store both. But that's cool. It shows that we don't have to write an entire segment again and then compress it. We compress as we're reading, which is pretty cool. Let's drop it again. Once again, 300 megabytes or so. Now I'm doing one of the cool things in 12, two and above, the ability to move a table without interruption to service. So I'm moving the table, I'm reorganizing it, but people can still act actively access it because I'm doing it online. Here's an important gotcha when you're doing online move. The data file grew to 858 megabytes. My segment is 336. So I went from 350, give or take, to 350, give or take, so at worst 700, yet my table space grew to 858. It was bigger than the sum of the two parts. That's a key thing when it comes to moving online, you actually have an additional space requirement. What's going on? So we're gonna do this again, but now we're gonna get a second session ready so we can see what's going on. So what this is doing is just querying the contents of DBA segments for that table space. So we can see there's just the one segment in there at the moment. So we're gonna go again, move online, come back, have a look. And we can see 
there's all these things created in there as the move is going on and eventually they disappear. You can see the move is completed when I bring this one back up. While the move was going on, I had my original table. This one here is a temporary segment, which is the table being built, the, the new version being built. It's the one that's growing. If I scroll back a bit, it was 285 megabytes then 350 and then it was done. But these other ones, RM tab, IOT top, etc., that uh, sit there temporarily during the operation, but disappear once the operation is complete. But you do need to allow space for them. And you can see this particular one, RM tab, grows as well 55 megabytes, 75 megabytes, etc. And eventually it disappeared. Because it's transient, I couldn't do a describe while it was running, but I took a screenshot from another one I did. This RM tab table is effectively being used for making sure we can map between the original rows and the target rows should someone do an operation on them during the online move because remember people can be deleting inserting updating etc so what we have is we have the source row id and the target row id so we know where the pairs are so if someone makes a change to the table we go ah yes okay that source row id that change needs to be reflected in the target row id what that means is when it comes to doing a reorg the rule of thumb is don't let things run tight. You know, it's just not worth having a reorg fail just because you were thinking, okay, I'll go right to within the nearest one megabyte of how much free space I have. Give yourself plenty of free space just in case, especially if you're doing it online, because you're going to need a copy of the original table, the new table, plus two row IDs, which is six bytes each for every single row. So that could be millions and millions of row IDs that would be consuming as well. This is my adjusted rule of thumb. When I say don't run things tight, here's, if you want a really successful implementation of a database in terms of money, performance, et cetera, you want your service to run hot. And this is a, a battle you'll always have with system admins, right? You want your systems to run as close to the wire on CPU as you can, because if your system needs two CPUs and your license for 12, you've wasted 10 CPUs worth of license money. That's just throwing money away. You want your service to run hot, but you want your storage to run cold, i.e. lots and lots of free space. In these days nowadays of flash and solid state devices, they run best the more empty they are. So what you wanna be doing is for a really successful Oracle database is you skimp on CPU and that money you save by running them close to the wire on CPU, you spend on bucket loads of excess storage and then things will run sweet. There's Connor's little tip for running a successful cloud database or an on-premise database.